everyone, it's Saturday morning and I've had a week of socializing that's more than I've had all January. I accidentally put all the socializing in one week because it just happened that way. And I'm actually going to the ballet tonight and tomorrow I'm going to Bremen to meet my family and go to a museum. And so to balance out all that socializing, I need some me time and finishing things. So I decided to stay in bed late. It's 10 o'clock. I never get up so late. And I finished the last book in the, I went on an adventure and all I got was this Barbarian Orc series that I started back in November when I couldn't sleep. And I really enjoyed the ending of this. So if you missed the beginning of me talking about the series, I stumbled across this because it was recommended to me when I was not sleeping and buying random things. And it's sort of an orc romance fantasy story where we have a band of queer characters going on an adventure trying to find out why women are attacking men in the country that they're in. And they're stumbling across different adventures and puzzles to solve. The whole thing is told by the two main characters, the necromancer and the orc, alternating in chapters. And there's a romance between the necromancer and the orc, but also between other characters of the band. I highly enjoyed this. The story is very friendly, sort of. We have a lot about the characters, their interactions and how they feel and how they feel about each other and their selves in being outsiders and how they are treated by others and how they treat themselves and become sort of a small family. The adventures that are going on are fun to follow. The puzzles are okay. There's a lot of explicit sex. That's what it is announced as, as a romance. And so if you're not interested in that, you could just skip that. But if you're looking for some fun adventure, fast reads, each of the books in the series is about 100 pages and it reads really fast. It's really an uplifting, fun adventure story. It's also saying of itself that it reads like a tabletop role play game where you stumble on adventures and things to solve. So that was fun. Now I'm about to get ready and go on my run. I'm scheduled to run 10k today. I'm not sure if I can actually manage. I'm having a little bit of back pain and I ate way too much this week due to stress and socializing. So I'm not sure. Let's try for that. And I also wanted to finish something or have an audiobook that I can finish this weekend. And I'm finally going to give The Wayward Children a try. I used to think I don't like it and the more I hear about it lately, the more I think maybe I was wrong when it came out. So I'm trying Every Heart a Doorway. It's about under five hours audiobook. Let's see how fast I can speed it up. It always depends on the narrator, how fast they talk in general, and how fast I can speed it up then to follow and enjoy the audiobook. But I will tell you more about that after I started listening to it. Honestly, at this point in time, I couldn't tell you who hates who more. I my body or my body me. It's been a week of mixed signals and eating all the wrong things. So I managed to run 11 kilometers. It sort of felt good, but I'm in massive pain right now. So I don't know. I have about two more hours till I have to get ready for the ballet. But before that, let's have a quick first talk about Every Heart a Doorway. Have I mentioned before that I picked up the series after having thought it wasn't for me and avoiding the hype for years? I don't know. Anyways, that's what I did. At some point I thought, I don't think this is for me and discarded it and didn't really pay much attention to the series anymore. It kept showing up in people's reading lists. And I still see people mentioning the series every now and again. But for some reason, the other day I got curious again and I was looking for a short audiobook and this was available and I thought, why not give it a try? As I said before, it's a little bit under five hours and I'm halfway through with just one run today. I can listen to it at one and a half point speed, so that's not so bad. I already noticed that I misunderstood the premise of the books. I always thought that every book follows one child through a door and then what happens on the other side of the door is what the books are about. But so far, we have met a lot of children who have been through doors and come back and they're all at a boarding school or 
at a sanatory or whatever you want to call it, where they get help to deal with being back in reality and not in the other worlds anymore. The camera stopped and I have no clue what I just said. So right now we're at this boarding school and the children have returned from the world and they're there to readjust to the world. So we hear about different worlds that the children visited or teenagers mostly and I think our main character is Nancy, who has been to the land of the dead or something. She's been a lot with dead people and the Lord of Death. And yeah, things happening at the school. I kind of find it interesting, the whole concept of walking through doors and being in fairy world is rather nice, but we don't get that world. We get them here afterwards and so far we've been introduced to a lot of people and a lot of different worlds and things happen but I don't really know what it's about so at the moment I don't see the hype. I think it's a solid book, I think the characters are somewhat interesting, I'm not really rooted to anyone. There's been a death and that's one of the most likable persons yet so I have no idea what happens now. Like I said, I'm going to finish it this weekend, seeing if I want to continue with the series or not. As it's quick audiobooks, it might be an easy series to continue. We'll see. Right now, before I have to get ready for the ballet, I found a sample on my Kindle. I have no idea why that's there and how it got there. So I decided before I start anything today or this weekend, as I will have not a lot of time to read, I'll just give this sample a go. It's The Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zhang. I have no clue what it is. I'll tell you later. Quickly before I leave. So the novel is apparently an apocalyptic pandemic book, maybe? I don't know if it's an pandemic book, but it's definitely set in a world where a small blocked out the sun, so food is scarce and they live off some gray protein flour. And I've barely read two chapters and now there is, we're following a cook that, I don't know if we have a, had a name yet, but we're following a, a chef and the chef just got hired to work in this country, the land of milk and honey, and is hired to cook for rich people and spiked their resume to pretend they are more experienced and better trained than they are. So far they found themselves in this kitchen place restaurant where they are meant to cook and there's a lot of food but for some reason they're not very good. The daughter of the owner came by and said like you're not a good cook. I don't know but the owner doesn't want to fire her so that's good for her but she doesn't really enjoy the taste of the food there. So I'm confused, but I passed a sample and ended up buying the book. So I guess that's a good thing. Still don't know where that came from. Anyways, I have to go now. Sunday morning. I have a little bit of time before I have to leave for Bremen, or rather for the train station, to go to Bremen and meet my family and go to a museum. But I wanted to catch up with you first on the ballet yesterday. I wasn't allowed to film, but it was amazing. I haven't been to the ballet in Hanover before. I actually noticed I've never been to the opera house before where the ballet took place. And I really enjoyed the experience. We were also very lucky that we had three different choreographies that were very interesting and not boring and really well done. So my friend and I were very happy with the spontaneous decision that we made sometime this week to go to the ballet. And I really would like to do that more often. It definitely counts for my adventure this month. I had an adventure. I went to the ballet. And I also finished or read chapter four in Land of Milk and Honey. And there we get some more background information for the character. So we learned that in her early 20s, before the smog and everything, she was very ambitious. She was traveling and she was all about pleasure in eating and finding new tastes and learning new things and learning from different cooks all over the world. And then something happened which really 
destroyed her ambition for a while and then the smog happened and then she started basically cooking again out of necessity because that was the only thing she could do but she really lost her appetite and that's something that still happens like I mentioned before she apparently cannot taste the food anymore so she really feels sick when eating and that is something we know now why it happened and we also learned a little bit about her personal life in the past then the big dinner party was and we learned a little bit more about her and the daughter of her employer and there's some foreshadowing going on of things happening or more relationships happening so far it's getting more interesting i find that I kind of like that we're thrown into a world and a story and a character that we really don't know much about. At the same time, I just want to know things and I'm confused. But that's probably going to clear up. Like I said, I'm just in chapter 4 of, I think, 12 or 13. So I'll do the dishes now because I didn't do dishes again forever. So I'm not going to do all of them because I have to leave further. That's my new strategy. I'm not going to aim to do all the dishes. I just start with some. That's a stupid idea. I could just do daily dishes and then be rid of all the dishes. What's your problem in my household? Your maintenance tasks that you know how to solve but never do. Let me know in comments. Back home. I didn't film anything in Bremen, so I've got nothing to show you because it was raining like hell and in the museum there were so many people and actually the exhibits were not that interesting. The exhibition was about Buddhism. It was interesting, but a lot of information that you had to read and yeah, some statues and pictures. So, but before I end the vlog, I wanted to tell you that I finished Every Hard Doorway and I did like it, but I don't understand the hype. So I completely misunderstood the series. I think I understood the things with the doors and the queer characters and that everybody loves the people portrayed, but I thought it was going into different worlds. But we were in the school the whole time following different characters and it was actually a murder mystery. So I enjoyed it. I think I will continue with the series because it's very easy to listen to. It's nothing dramatic, it's short, it's easy, lovable characters, I agree with that. I'm not really invested in any of them, really, but they are people to be interested in. So it's not that you follow characters that you don't care about, but I'm not overly invested and really want to spend more time with the characters like you sometimes have with other books. Yeah. I'm kind of glad I didn't pick it up earlier and especially not in book form because I think the audiobook was the right choice for me and also the way the state I'm in currently that I'm looking for more cozy and fluffier and easier books to listen to and stories to dive into. More escapism on the lighter side of life. I'm not sure if that sounds right. But anyways, so I also read a little bit more in Land of Milk and Honey, but not much. I couldn't really focus on the train. I read about half of chapter four and we're getting more into the details of story. So I'm guessing we're entering spoiler country. I'm not going to wait to finish the book until I end the vlog because I think that won't be before next weekend. It's about 150 pages or so and the week is going to be busy in a different way. I noticed that this week had so much socializing and I spent so much money, I ate so much food, I kind of am exhausted but it was a very nice week. I'm wondering how I used to do that all the time, was spending less money but more socializing. But next week is going to focus all on training the new colleague and catching up on work a little bit of the things that I cannot get to when I'm training someone and I'm hoping for a very very nice, quiet weekend and maybe I'll vlog there again but yeah let me know what you did this weekend did you have a nice time what are you reading right now have you read any of the books I have talked about have you seen any great exhibitions lately what have you done thank you for watching